It might seem that I'm in a wild area, but we're actually by a place that thousands and thousands of people commute by every day, and I'm with Roberta Schwartz, and so where are we? We're at the corner of Tandler and Blankenship, right off of the 10th Street exit of 205, and we sure hope you'll come and see this beautiful place. So what do we call this? What is this? We call this the White Oak Savannah, and there used to be 600,000 acres of this beautiful land all up and down the Willamette River. Now only about 2% still exists. Wow. Of that 2%, only 1% is owned by the people, like this beautiful park. We have 14 acres that we've been able to secure and restore as a park, and we have six acres left to go. We're busy trying to raise money to do it. And it's really part of the Westland Park System. Yes, it is. You know, and we came here earlier in the day, Garden Time Gang, we brought a picnic lunch, so really you can enjoy it in that way too. Yes, you can. The Eagle Scouts have been wonderful. They've put in a beautiful kiosk, they put in a beautiful park um, bench, well, actually 10 park benches that the community has helped to raise money towards, and they've also put in the picnic bench that I found you at today. <laughs> <laughs> I love it every time I see people at the picnic bench. It's so nice to know that people are discovering this hidden treasure. It is. And so a little history. So you've been involved in how long? We've been involved for about 11 years so far. Um, my husband and I took a hike one day and we knew we shouldn't be doing it because it was <laughs> trespassing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we did come in and we started little by little to get to getting into this beautiful place. And we saw that it was like a secret garden. Ah, and then so somebody owned it and it was going to be developed. It was. It was going to be 280,000 uh, square feet of commercial office space and about 400 parking spaces with mm. it. And we thought we've got to do what we can to see if we can save it. Uh, and so really through your efforts, you guys bought it with some other partners. We had, it was so great. It's been a community um, outreach from the very get-go. We started br be bringing people up here and as soon as they came up and saw it, they said, who do I write a letter to? <laughs> who does it go to? When can I send it? And uh. we started getting first elected officials and then others wanting to save this beautiful place. Uh, so what are the other partners who all got in? It's been um, Oregon Parks and Rec has come in and they have paid for a third of this 14 acre beautiful stretch. Another third was paid for by Metro and then the third um, third was paid for by the city of West Lynn. Uh, and I love it too that you really got even a rock star involved. Oh it's so great. <laughs> we knew we needed to have a song so we decided to try to do an outreach to Joni Mitchell and see if any if there was any way possible that we could use Big Yellow Taxi. They paid Paradise and put up a parking lot. So we started with Sony and then with Warner Brothers and then they directed us to the publicist. The publicist said okay now you can talk to the agent and her agent said she doesn't like to give away this song. This song is very important to her. So we said could you give her a couple of paragraphs and could you also please just show her these photographs of the special place we're trying to save and about a week later we got a really nice call from her agent and she said are you sitting down and I said yes and she said Joni said yes and oh, we went wonderful. all Valley Girl and oh my god she said yes and they were in, in Beverly Hills in their office and here I was in West Lynn, Oregon and we had this amazing connection going on. It is it's so and it is a whole community and so you have um, volunteer work parties and things and you're uncovering native plants that really haven't seen the light of day for years and years. Yes we are we have a wonderful man named Wendell Wood and he comes up here every three years from Crescent City California. Um, he works for Oregon Wild part-time and he'll come up every three years to see what new things have been uh, been able to come up because they got wow. light and air and, and everything that they need. With the Himalayan and Armenian blackberry going, more of the natives are coming up. And we just had one that was special that was found last year by the scientists. That's cool. And it's called the purple snake root. And it had not been seen in this neck of the woods for a hundred years. Wow, and it's back. It's back. Dr. Stephen Myers at the university has said, it is back. Uh. And I said, this is a big deal for us, Dr. Myers. And he said, this is a big deal for us too. <laughs> <laughs> and also um, Collier and Bartlett Tree Care is also help with it. They have been amazing. Terrell Collier, and I'm sorry to say that he has recently passed, mm -hmm. and, and now in his stead, wonderful man whose name is Kevin Carr. And Kevin Carr is the new manager, and he has done so much already. We had 60 um, little Gary Oaks that were put in by 30 middle school kids. Oh, fun. And Kevin was here showing him how to do it along with his wife and one of his top um, arborists. Oh, that is wonderful. Really great. It makes you feel very, very, very close to him and close to, he knew this was a special place and he, from the very get-go, the first time I took him up here, he said, 
what our company wants to help you. What can we do? So, that is wonderful. wonderful. It really brings a whole community together. It's a community garden, but it's not a vegetable garden like we <laughs> usually hear. It, that's true. <laughs> and we had the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde come up, oh. and they said that it's been their garden forever. And so when we get the last of the, we've got 14 acres secured now, and we'd like to get the last six acres done. And what they'd like to do is have a test garden to try to see if they can bring in some of the things that they, oh. as a tribe, would, would uh, harvest here. And of course, they would they would leach the uh, acorns, and they would use the uh, blue camas and bring up um, the tuber. So they would like to have a test garden here, and we're all about that. We would love to have that wow. happen. So it's just not a beautiful place. It's a historical place. It's somewhere to bring the kids, somewhere to walk around. Really, you've done such a wonderful job. Is um, you need more helpers? Can we come and help? Oh, somehow? this is so great. We would love to have people. So far, we've had 10,500 people who have come here. And as I was telling this nice group at lunch earlier at the picnic bench, um, they've been as little as two, and as um, the oldest who's been up here working has been 85 years ah. old. So 10,500 hours in the five and a half years that has actually been 14 acres, um, an actual native um, natural park and significant wildlife habitat. The last six acres um, we're trying to get, and Metro gave us a second grant. This is so wonderful, great. Wonderful, wonderful. They don't usually give uh, a second bite of the apple, but they gave us another $500,000 grant. The citizens have come up and matched that 500000 grant. We're about $200,000 away from making the whole 20 acres into this beautiful ah. white oak savanna forever in ah. perpetuity. So, you know, we can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. You can help monetarily or with your volunteer hours, get dirty, get in the garden, and really help bring this legacy forever and ever in the future. Thank you so much. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs>